so let's begin with the mechanical properties of fluids now what are fluids fluids means the materials that can flow okay substances uh, that can flow right so what is a fluid anything that can flow is a fluid so solids are not fluids liquids and gases they are fluids right okay so mostly we are going to talk about liquids in this chapter so now pressure what is pressure it is normal force exerted by a fluid per unit area per unit area of contact so for an example suppose you have uh, this container and there is some water in that container okay water or any other fluid so then the weight of this water would be acting downwards so if you take this area at the bottom okay area of the container which is in contact with water the, then how much is the weight acting on that area it is the weight of water right weight of water okay and how much is area of contact so area of contact is suppose a so then that weight weight is equal to mg and if you divide that by area so then that is the pressure right so pressure is equal to weight divided by area this is very simple and it comes out to be equal to rho g h it comes out to be equal to what rho g h this thing is clear yes no okay very simple then okay so if you take two points let's say this is point 2 this is point 1 then difference in pressure between those two points would be equal to rho g multiplied by h2 minus h1 suppose you have this container and there is some liquid okay it is filled with some liquid so now what is pressure pressure is equal to force upon area okay so force is equal to weight of the liquid and what is weight weight is m times g okay so pressure is m times g divided by area so now see here what is mass mass is density into volume so density multiplied by area times length okay length of the liquid column times g by a okay so now area area gets cancelled out okay and that's why you get l times uh, rho into g or rho g times l so now what is this l so suppose you want to find out pressure at some point okay so pressure at some point let's say i want to find out pressure at this point this is my point one then pressure at this point would be equal to the weight of the liquid column just above it okay above this point so weight of this column divided by its area area in contact okay so that will be equal to what rho g multiplied by l1 l1 is what you can say is it is the height of this column okay let's say length of the column means height of the column so that is rho g multiplied by this, this much difference it is equal to sorry this much distance it's equal to what let's say it is h1 okay and this is pressure at point 1 pressure at point 2 if you take some point over here okay pressure at point 2 this is point 2 then the pressure over there would be equal to rho g multiplied by the height of the liquid column above it above that point so that is equal to h2 okay so this thing is correct p2 is equal to you can say rho g multiplied by h2 h2 is the height of the liquid column above that point okay it's not the height of the point right so it is height of the liquid column above that point and what is p1 p1 is uh, rho g multiplied by h1 h1 is height of the liquid column above this point so they, therefore what is the difference in pressure p2 minus p1 would be just equal to rho g h2 minus rho g h1 so that is rho g h2 minus h1 okay this thing is clear yes no everyone okay so p2 minus p1 is rho g h2 minus h1 but now here we need to remember that this is not height of the point this is height of the column liquid column above that point okay so if you just take these two points 
82 points in the uh, inside liquid suppose so what is pressure difference between them rho g multiplied by the difference in heights of these points okay or what you can say is it is the length of the liquid column it is which is between those two points okay clear everyone this is simple okay good so then next is the pascal's law okay now what is pascal's law pascal's law says that the pressure in the fluid at rest is same at all points if they are at the same height okay so pressure in the fluid at rest it is same at all points if they are at the same height right so if points are at same height then pressure due to the liquid or due to the fluid at all those points would be equal okay and then let's add one more sentence over here pressure applied to a fluid pressure applied to a fluid is transmitted is transmitted undiminished so without getting diminished okay is transmitted in all parts of fluid in all parts of fluid undiminished okay that means without decreasing so if you apply some pressure at the top the pressure is applied everywhere in the fluid right so that means it is applied at all points okay suppose you increase some pressure at the top so pressure at the bottom would also increase by the same amount okay this thing is clear so in all parts and i, I should also say in all directions okay in the fluid so we have seen this thing the pressure is equal to what pressure is equal to rho g h and this is pressure due to this liquid column having height equal to h right so now see see here you have this column 1 and the column 2 okay you have column 1 column 2 so if you consider any point consider some imaginary separation inside the fluid okay which separates uh, this circle separates or this plane separates this column 1 and column 2 then column 1 exerts some pressure on column 2 that is force applied per unit area and according to newton's third law the pressure would be what equal and opposite so column 2 also exerts some upward force up thrust on the column 1 right so if you consider a point over here okay if that point is or if that is a particle of column 2 then it is under the pressure due to column 1 okay if that is a particle of uh, column 1 then it is under the pressure due to what column 2 this thing is clear yes no column 1 exerts a force on column 2 right column 2 also exerts a force on column 1 column 1 exerts some pressure or force let's say on column 2 according to newton's third law column 2 also exerts equal and opposite force on the column 1 okay so that means the pressure is not only downwards pressure is also upwards is this thing clear to everyone yes no right good so pressure on column 1 is also equal and opposite okay all right so then again the pascal's law pressure exerted on an incompressible sorry pascal's law says pressure exerted on an incompressible fluid gets transferred equally in all directions so i have written it um, so pressure applied to a fluid transmitted is transmitted in all parts of fluid also in all directions and undiminished okay so that is important so pressure exerted on an incompressible fluid 
now the fluid is incompressible this is idealization that whatever pressure you apply the fluid will not be compressed so pressure exerted on an incompressible fluid gets transferred equally in all directions okay it gets transferred equally in all directions this is the pascal's law okay right so then now suppose uh, for an example suppose you have suppose you have this fluid contained in the container and you have this piston okay air tight piston then you push this piston so you are pushing the piston at the top so what happens is suppose pressure at the, this point it increases by some amount due to the force exerted by you so what i said is pressure at each and every point would be increased by the same amount okay whether the point is here whether the point is here whether the point is here doesn't matter pressure increases by the same amount so pressure applied to a fluid gets transmitted equally in all directions this thing is clear yes no everyone right this is the pascal's law all right then now what are the uses of pascal's law so pascal's law is used in the hydraulic lifts so now you might have been to some service station okay where your car is serviced so then you might have seen that you park your car uh, on the first floor let's say or at the ground floor and the car goes to the basement for servicing and then when you come back to pick up your car okay it comes from the basement okay it is lifted from the basement now what kind of lifts are used there so the lifts are hydraulic lifts not necessarily hydraulic lift but one okay one of the lifts that can be used is hydraulic lift how is the construction of hydraulic lift so here you have these two cylinders okay this is one cylinder this is another cylinder right and they are connected by means of this tube okay or this cylinder it is connected to the second cylinder okay and then now see there would be some fluid in this container okay this whole container there will be some fluid and if there is no pressure applied then level of the fluid would be equal okay there is no external pressure means there would be some pressure because of air only so because of that the level of the fluid everywhere would be equal so now here you have one piston okay a small piston having area let's say a1 okay can you see that on this side there is a small piston on this side there is a huge piston okay on this side there is a huge piston right so now these two pistons this piston and this piston they will be at same heights now this piston is connected to some shaft let's let's say or some rod okay and your car would be on this platform which is connected to this piston right now if this person lifts up this piston okay this handle let's say the piston is lifted so then your car will move down and if he pushes this handle downwards then pressure will be applied this way so pressure on this piston will be applied this way upwards so your car will be lifted up so now if the areas of these pistons were equal then force that you need to apply in order to lift the car would be what would be just same as that of weight of the car and that is just impossible okay for somebody like us okay it is just impossible just impossible right it might be possible for rajinikanth but it's not possible for us right okay so now what does the pascal's law say that if this piston and this piston they are at the same height then pressure at those two points would be equal and if you exert some piston force on piston 1 that means you are exerting exerting some pressure on the fluid at this point so it will get transmitted equally at this point also okay 
in all parts of the fluid also. So because of that, what happens is pressure is same here as well as here. So the force applied by U is suppose F1, area of this piston is A1. So the pressure P1 is equal to F1 by A1. It will be equal to F2 by A2, right? F2 is what? The force that is applied due to uh, by the fluid on the second piston, okay? And A2 is area of this piston. So F1 by A1, force applied by U divided by the area of the piston on which you are exerting that force. It is equal to F2 by A2. So that force is getting transmitted, okay, divided by the other area, area of the second piston, okay? And then from there, you can move A2 on this side. So F2 would be just equal to A2 by A1 times F1. And now here is the crucial point. So A2 is very, very, very big compared to that of A1. Okay. A2 is very big compared to that of A1. For an example, A2 is 100 times of A1. Okay. It is uh, literally 100 times of A1. So then force that gets applied at the second piston would be equal to what 100 times of force that you are applying on the first piston. Okay, so force that is being applied on the car, upwards force or up thrust, it is 100 times that, that of the force exerted by you on the first piston. Okay, and that's why the car is lifted easily. Is this thing clear? Yes, no. Okay, so very good. So, this is just force multiplied. Okay, all right, so this is one application, then there are lots of applications like hydraulic brakes is another application, okay. So in certain vehicles, the hydraulic brakes are used. So now some simple diagram of, a simple diagram of hydraulic brakes is drawn here. So this is a pedal, okay, that you can, you can push with your legs. It is connected to a master cylinder, master cylinder means there is lot of fluid in that cylinder okay fluid means what there would be water okay hydra means water so what is used in hydraulic lift uh, sorry hydraulic lift right as well as hydraulic brakes is water okay so here push this pedal with your legs so some pressure is applied to the master cylinder which contains lot of water and this master cylinder is connected by means of uh, some tubes small small not small tubes are not small tubes having small diameter they are connected to these brakes like this okay so there is some assembly like this so they are connected over here okay so the pressure that you are exerting on the cylinder master cylinder a master cylinder means fluid inside the cylinder it gets transmitted undiminished everywhere and therefore what happens this fluid is pushed fluid through these pipes it is pushed and which pushes these brakes okay right so some of them are here okay here some of them are disc brakes so these discs are pushed okay against uh, your tire okay some of them are drum brakes. So, anyways, this is what the hydraulic brake. This is the application. Is this thing clear? Yes, no. Okay. These are some applications of the Pascal's law. All right. So next, let us talk about the pressure measuring devices. So one is mercury barometer, one is open tube manometer. So have you seen some manometer or barometer anywhere? You have not seen a manometer, pressure measuring device. Have you measured pressure of something? If you are not well, if you go to some clinic, if you visit some clinic, then the first thing that they do is they tie some manometer. Okay, they tie a manometer to your uh, hand and they measure the pressure. Right. 
so you have seen a manometer do you check air pressure in your bicycle or your car or your bike right so again they make use of a manometer so everyone has seen at least two manometers one is the manometer used to check the blood pressure and the other one is the manometer used to check the air pressure of either car bike or bicycle right anyways so let's talk about the barometer and manometer so what is barometer barometer is used to measure atmospheric pressure okay and its working is very very simple so see you have this container it has some fluid okay water you can say but it is made up of mercury okay because our density of mercury is very high if you want to make a barometer which uses water then you will require huge apparatus because its density is very very low compared to that of mercury okay so suppose you have this container it contains some fluid mercury okay and then what you do is what you do is you take a test tube evacuated test tube that means there is vacuum in this test tube and you put it inverted like this okay so there was vacuum now what will happen the pressure over there is very low i mean pressure over there is zero ideally it should be zero depends upon what kind of vacuum you, you are making right the pressure over there would be equal to zero now what will happen see at this level if there is a fluid pressure at all those parts or pressure at all those points would be equal according to the pascal's law okay but pressure over there was not the same right pressure over there was not the same as that of pressure outside you can say so therefore now what will happen this fluid will be pushed inside from the areas of higher pressure from the regions of higher pressure to the region of lower pressure and that's why the uh, fluid will move up okay in this evacuated test tube till the time till the time what happens pressure at all these points becomes equal is this thing clear everyone okay and then you can measure air pressure very easily so now suppose equilibrium is established that means the fluid has moved up and now it has stayed at some level okay for some time so now what you can say is pressure is balanced okay so pressure at this point this point this point would be equal and pressure at this point this point and this point would be equal so pressure at a is because of what it's because of the air pressure at this point is not because of the air it's because of what this liquid column this fluid column so you can measure it very easily it is just equal to rho g h okay so just see how much is the uh, height of this liquid column mercury column basically and then you can find out the pressure okay just do rho g h this is simple right everyone all right good so then next one is open to manometer and what is that so suppose you want to measure pressure of something suppose you want to measure blood pressure etc what do you do is you connect this u shaped tube okay so to measure blood pressure you make use of a manometer there it's not a u shaped tube but it is some kind of tube right so this is very simple manometer here now what will happen so you have this container it contains some fluid so it will have some pressure now you connect this u shaped tube to that container so what happens is because of the pressure due to the fluid inside this container this fluid in the u shaped tube it is pushed like this okay it is pushed this way okay and therefore level of the fluid goes up on this side 
right level of the fluid will go up on this side other side okay till the time what happens the pressure at this point a and this point b that means pressure at the same level same height would be equal okay pressure at the same height would be equal till that time this fluid is pushed like this okay so then now you can very easily find out pressure at a so what would be pressure at a pressure at a would be equal to pressure at b using pascal's law okay but then what is pressure at a so pressure at a would be equal to pressure at b and that is equal to pressure due to this liquid column plus what else is there so above that liquid column there is atmosphere okay plus the atmospheric pressure right plus the atmospheric pressure so this thing is clear pressure of the gas inside this container pressure of any fluid gas or fluid inside this container will be equal to atmospheric pressure plus rho g h where h is the height of this column okay is it clear yes no okay after that let's see one more point called as archimedes principle so let's see what is archimedes principle when a body is immersed partly or completely in a liquid in a fluid it experiences an upward force equal to the weight of the liquid displaced okay when you dip when you immerse a body partly or completely okay partly or completely in a liquid then it experiences an upward force equal to the weight of the liquid displaced now it becomes very clear uh, with this demonstration with this experiment okay so here you can see you have this 5 kg weight and it is connected to this balance okay it is connected to this balance you dip that weight along with the balance so right now it shows what 5 kg so now you immerse that weight you immerse that weight in the liquid okay so now what happens is because of because of this thing because of this weight some fluid is displaced how much of fluid is displaced 2 kg of fluid is suppose displaced okay this is 2 kg of fluid then you see that the weight shown over here is 3 kgs okay so what does that mean it means that the force or the gravitational um, gravitational pull on this weight it is equal to 5 kg okay weight of this object is 5 kg that's acting downwards but then there is up thrust upward force due to the li liquid okay there is upward force due to the fluid acting on this one and it's equal to 2 kg you have some weight you dip it in the liquid you immerse it in a liquid okay and the liquid exerts some force the upward force on that weight how much upward force does it exert it's equal to the amount of liquid the weight of the amount of liquid that is displaced so when you immerse this 5 kg weight inside this liquid what happens is there is a tap connected over here at the top so some liquid flows out of the tap when you immerse this weight in the liquid and here you see the weight of that liquid is equal to 2 kg and the weight shown by this balance becomes 3 kg so earlier the weight shown by uh, this balance was 5 kg because this is 5 kg weight okay now the weight shown is equal to 3 kg why is it so because the weight of this weight acting downwards is equal to 5 kg and there is up thrust upward force due to this fluid which is equal to 2 kg okay so according to archimedes principle how much upward force does a fluid exert on an object so some liquid is displaced by the object when you immerse uh, the object in the fluid okay so weight of that liquid is suppose 2 kg then same amount of force okay 2 kg weight same amount of force is exerted by the fluid on this object is this thing clear everyone okay very good so that force is known as a buoyant force okay a buoyant force so what is a buoyant force it is an up thrust exerted by a fluid okay on an object which is immersed in the fluid and it's equal to 
the weight of the fluid that got displaced okay so f sub x b is the weight of it is equal to weight of the liquid displaced right so that is equal to m times g mass multiplied by acceleration due to gravity and what is mass mass is equal to density multiplied by volume v is the volume of the liquid displaced right v is the volume of the liquid displaced then buoyant force is equal to rho times v into g okay so this thing is clear everyone okay good now let us see some problems based upon this let's see the first one very simple problem a hydraulic system is used to lift a 2000 kg vehicle in an auto garage okay garage or garage i don't know what do you call it if the vehicle is kept on a piston of area 0.55 meter square and force is applied to piston of area 0.03 meter square what is the minimum force that must be applied to lift the vehicle so it's very simple so f2 is equal to a2 by a1 but we want to find out f1 so f1 is equal to a1 by a2 multiplied by f2 right so a1 is the smaller area a2 is bigger area and f2 is the bigger force or the weight that we want to lift okay so it is 0.03 divided by it is 0.55 multiplied by this is 2000 multiplied by acceleration due to gravity so f2 would be equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity m times g okay so then this is equal to what 3 divided by 55 multiplied by this is 20,000 and then uh, you can do some cancellations so this will be 11 and if you divide this thing by 5 it will be 4000 so 4000 times 3 is 12000 12000 divided by 11 how much is that 1000 something so 1069 that's the answer check it okay good all right all right let's see next one a barometer is constructed using liquid density is 760 kg per meter cube what would be the height of the liquid column where the mercury barometer reads 76 centimeter okay so question is you want to make a barometer that means you want to measure the atmospheric pressure but using some different liquid and its density is 760 kg per meter cube okay what would be the height of liquid column when the mercury barometer reads just 76 centimeter and density of mercury is given is 13600 kg per meter cube that's very very high right and this is from NEET 2022 okay so you are measuring same pressure atmospheric pressure that means for the liquid and for the mercury rho g h must be equal right pressure is equal that is atmospheric pressure only so measured by liquid so let's say p l is equal to pressure due to the uh, mercury column pressure due to liquid column must be equal to pressure due to mercury column because they are both measuring what atmospheric pressures okay so this is just equal to rho g rho g h but this is rho of liquid g is same height of liquid must be equal to rho due to mercury sorry rho of mercury means density of mercury g times height of mercury okay so g g got cancelled and you just want the height of that liquid column okay so height of liquid column would be just equal to density of mercury divided by density of liquid multiplied by height of mercury column so take density of mercury is 13600 divided by density of the fluid 760 and then you have height of mercury so that is nice 76 centimeters so but we want to convert it to meters so because options are in meters so 76 multiplied by 10 raised to minus 2 all right so this thing is nice 
So 76, this is 760 divided by 76 is 10. Take that to numerator, so it becomes 10 raised to minus 1. 10 raised to minus 2 and these two zeros means 100. That gets cancelled. So 136 into 10 raised to minus 1. Okay. So height of the liquid is 136 into 10 raised to minus 1 means 13.6 meters. So that is very high. Right. So mercury barometer just reads 76 centimeters. Okay, just 76 centimeters. Okay, three fourths of a meter, and this one reads 13.6 meters. Okay, is this one clear? Yes, no. Everyone. Right, this is simple. Okay, let's see next one. In a YouTube as shown in the figure, water and oil are in the left side and right side of the tube. So on left side there is water, on right side there is uh, some liquid oil, okay, respectively. The heights from the bottom of uh, bottom for water and oil columns are 15 centimeters and 20 centimeters respectively. The density of the oil is okay tell me what should we do again the pascal's law right so see if you take these two points if you take let's say this point and this point so pressure at these points would be equal okay pressure at pressures at those points would be equal right pressure at this point and this point so both both colors are <laughs> equally invisible <coughs> sorry okay so pressure at this point and this point would be equal this is by the pascal's law pressure at the same height would be equal right so therefore now this column is having height equal to 15 centimeters and this one has height of 20 centimeters so what does that mean it means that so pressure due to the water is equal to pressure due to the oil okay so this is rho g h of water water right and it should be equal to rho g h you uh, calculated it 750 let's check so rho g h for the oil okay then we just need to put the values nothing so g g gets cancelled and Instead of doing rho gh, you can just say rho h of first one is equal to rho h of second one because g is anyways the same. Okay. And we want the density of the oil. The density of oil is just equal to density of water multiplied by height of water column divided by height of the oil okay so then height of the water is 15 centimeters divided by height of that oil column is 20 centimeters multiplied by density of water is 1000 so 15 by 20 is 3 3 by 4 and 3 by 4 times 1000 so that is 750 correct 750 kg per meter cube okay so it is option b This one is clear. Okay, good. So now this kind of problem is repeated sometimes. See this one, this is from NEET 2017. I guess this one is from 2019 or something. Okay, let's see this one. A tube with both ends open to the atmosphere is partially filled with water okay partially filled with water so this side there is water and oil which is immixable with water it cannot be mixed with water okay is poured into one side until it stands at the distance of 10 mm above the water level on the other side so on this side there is water on this side there is oil but what is height difference it is 10 mm okay Meanwhile, the water rises by 65 mm from
from its original level. So water rises up to 65 mm. The density of the oil is what is the density of oil? This is the question. Again, it's same one. See, this is 65 mm. This is 65 mm, and water is still this height till this level. Okay, this is the level of water. Right, you can see this is the level of water. So that means 65 plus 65. How much? 130. And this is the oil. Okay, and this is 10 mm above water means its level is 140. So the question is what is the density of oil? So we have this formula density of oil times height of oil is equal to density of water times height of the water column. Okay, density of oil is just height of the water column divided by height of the oil column multiplied by density of water. So that is equal to height of water column we found was 130, 130 mm. Now both are in mm that means we don't need to uh, change the unit also okay height of the oil is 140 mm multiplied by 1000 okay that is density of water so then uh, this is 13 by 14 multiplied by 1000 so how much is it 13000 divided by 14 something above 900 i guess 13000 divided by 14 tell me so this is 140 minus okay 126 yeah it is above 900 928 correct so it's option c okay this one is clear yes no right and see in this problem the density of water is not given that means you need to remember density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube okay so this kind of problem is repeated next let's see this one a solid floats with one fourth of its volume above the surface of water the density of the solid is tell me a solid floats with one fourth of its volume above the water. So let me draw water and that solid. Okay, so this is water and there is a solid cube, let's suppose, or let's take cylinder, solid cylinder. Okay and its one fourth of volume is above the surface of water so this is one fourth of volume right then what is the density of solid this is the question okay so what i can say is its weight is totally balanced by the buoyant force due to the water right so the weight of solid is equal to the buoyant force because it is totally balanced its weight acts downwards and the buoyant force acts upwards if one of them is more buoyant force cannot be more but if the weight of that object is more then it would sink right okay so weight of this solid is equal to what weight of the solid can be written as its density multiplied by its volume okay multiplied by acceleration due to gravity so density times volume is its mass it is equal to weight of the weight of the fluid displaced weight of fluid displaced okay and that is equal to what is weight of the fluid displaced it is again the mass multiplied by acceleration due to gravity but mass again can be written as what density into volume so let's write density of water it is rho volume is suppose v dash volume displaced is v dash times g okay you have density of the solid times v multiplied by g is equal to density of the fluid uh, that is water okay times v dash v, v dash is the volume displaced times g and how much it, how much would be v dash v dash is the volume displaced how much volume is displaced so one fourth of volume of this container or this uh, solid it is outside of 
the water surface okay so if one fourth is outside means how much is inside three fourth is inside right three fourth is inside so v dash is equal to i can say v dash is equal to three fourth of v you put that here so g g gets cancelled okay v dash divided by v or we can write it here it is equal to three fourth times rho okay okay so d is equal to three fourth of rho this thing is clear yes no everyone okay v dash is equal to what three fourth of v so v v gets cancelled what remains is three fourth so d is equal to three fourth of rho so again a simple question not difficult right okay let's see next one two non mixing liquids so again non mixing liquids of density is rho and n times rho n is greater than 1 are put in a container you have two liquids they are put in a container so density of one is rho density of another one is n times rho so of course n times rho would be at the bottom and the liquid having less density would be at the top the height of each liquid is h okay the height of each of them is h a solid cylinder of length l and density d is put in this container okay so you have solid cylinder you put that in this container the cylinder floats with its axis vertical and the length rho l okay this is not rho l pl p is less than 1 in the denser liquid so it floats okay so let's draw the diagram <coughs> sorry you have this container like this and there are two liquids height of both of them is h only okay so this is a denser one and this one is denser the other one is rarer right you can show that with different colors this is suppose rarer one this one is denser and then you put a cylinder okay you immerse some cylinder and uh, the density of cylinder is d density of cylinder okay and what ha happens is it floats but it doesn't float in first liquid it floats somewhere over here such that along its vertical axis and its length is pl in the denser liquid okay p is less than 1 means some of its length is in this upper liquid some of the length is in denser liquid and you want to find out what is this density what is its density so tell me what should we do here how much is this length total length is l this is p times of l right okay so once again we can say the same thing weight of that cylinder it's equal to the total buoyant force okay buoyant force due to buoyant force due to first liquid plus buoyant force due to the second liquid because two buoyant forces will act upwards its weight will act downwards and the weight would be balanced right weight can be written as density into volume multiplied by g right mg weight is equal to mg m is equal to density times volume and that is equal to now here Uh, let's say this volume inside the first liquid is v1 volume inside the second liquid is v2 okay so buoyant force due to plus first liquid it would be equal to its density is rho okay weight weight of this liquid sorry weight of this solid weight of the cylinder would be equal to d times volume into g by d because its density is v right density is given i wrote it separately again i took rho density is d so that is equal to the buoyant force due to the first liquid so that is rho times volume inside the first liquid that is v1 times g 
plus buoyant force inside uh, buoyant force due to the second liquid so how much is the density of the second one density of second one is n rho so it is equal to n times rho multiplied by v2 multiplied by g is this thing clear everyone yes no okay what i have done is weight of this cylinder it's equal to its density into volume means this is mass mass is density into volume times g okay it's equal to buoyant force due to first one buoyant force due to second one okay so rho vg but volume inside first one is v1 volume inside second one is v2 and density of first liquid is rho density of the second one is n times rho then we can solve this one so gg let's cancel out gg okay gg gets cancelled out everywhere so you have d times v okay and how can we write the volume volume can be written as area multiplied by length so it is d times a multiplied by its total length it's equal to rho multiplied by what would be volume of this one so the length inside the second is p times l so how much would be this length it is total length minus pl right this would be total length minus pl so let's write that so v1 is a multiplied by how much is the length total length minus pl is this much length right and g we cancel out plus you have n times rho multiplied by what is v2 v2 is equal to area multiplied by this length area multiplied by length in the second liquid so second liquid that is p times l okay so then what else gets cancelled out area gets cancelled out no a a and a gets cancelled out everywhere okay and from second one we can take rho common so what remains is can we cancel out l too yes we can cancel out l also so let's do that here so it is l minus p l so we can take l common okay so rho we have taken common we can take l common so from first term what remains is 1 minus 1 minus p from the second term what remains is n right no n times p and that is equal to d times l so l l gets cancelled so this is a lot of calculation so then rho times n p plus 1 minus p that should be the answer okay n p n p plus 1 minus p or we can subtract that p from this n p also so it is n minus 1 p plus 1 okay so n minus 1 p plus 1 times rho that should be the answer n minus p n minus 1 p plus 1 is it there such an option option b right this is clear yes no clear not clear okay so there is some calculation there nothing else okay so con concept is same the weight of the solid that you immerse it's equal to buoyant force if it floats that's it then you need to match the weight with buoyant force so last one was simple the weight is equal to what the buoyant force okay so here uh, you directly get the answer here you have two liquids okay so uh, the solid the cylinder it is partly in first liquid and partly it is in second liquid okay so that's why you need to add up the buoyant forces due to the two liquids right so this is from need 2016 this is not from need but there can be a question in need based upon Archimedes principle.